everyone uh, we are going to do the sixth experiment of the general chemistry lab today so this is about the redox titration so the redox titration uh, is actually a same principle same titration technique what you have done uh, in the last week the acid base titration so the concept is the same so we're going to use a burette and we're going to use an Elmer flask and do the titration but here in the redox titration we have an oxidizing agent and we react the oxidizing agent with a reducing agent so we in this experiment we have uh, potassium permanganate as an oxidizing agent and oxalic acid as a reducing agent okay so in the titration technique we are going to use a burette and also we're going to use an Elmer flask so in the burette we're going to take the oxidizing agent so we are going to fill potassium permanganate throughout the burette and the reducing agent oxalic acid we're going to take in the Elmer flask so uh, before you fill uh, the whole burette with potassium permanganate as we know that we have to wash the burette first and also we have to rinse the burette with potassium permanganate solution so the washing the burette and the rinsing the burette these two procedures we have already shown in the previous experiment acid based titration so you please go and watch those video uh, to have an understanding about the basic burette setup okay so uh, I filled my burette with the potassium permanganate now I'm going to clamp this burette back in the stand so as you can see here if you come onto the top so I kept the burette reading here I kept the meniscus the upper meniscus of this burette reading here around 0 0.2 0 0.2 so um, remember that this is a potassium permanganate solution which is having a deep purple color so it is not transparent that's why we don't want to look at the lower meniscus of the solution because it's very very hard for you to find out the lower meniscus but for solutions like this if it is not transparent we can use the upper meniscus to take the burette ready so for this particular burette setup the burette reading is going to be 0 0.2 0 0.2 so I'm going to write this one as 0 0.20 as my initial burette reading so this is going to be the first trial so I'm going to write the initial burette reading at 0 0.2 Zero, 0 0.20 milliliters okay so I filled my burette with the oxidizing agent that is potassium permanganate so now I need the reducing agent so our reducing agent for today's experiment is the oxalic acid so I'm going to take the oxalic acid into the Elmer, Elmer flask so what we are going to do here is I'm going to measure 0 0.1 gram of this oxalic acid and I'm going to transfer this one into the Elmer flask and I dissolve this one in 50 ml of sulfuric acid okay so the sulfuric acid here is actually acting as a catalyst for this reaction so what we are going to do here is basically we are doing the titration so we are titrating the potassium permanganate from the burette with the oxalic acid and from the titration value we are going to find out the percentage of oxalate in the given sample so in order to do this titration we need the concentration of the oxidizing agent so the concentration of your oxidizing agent that is a potassium permanganate is 0 0.02 so I'm going to write this concentration in the data sheet right now so the concentration of your potassium permanganate solution is 0 0.02 molar okay so I measured the weight of the oxalic acid uh, so it is 0 0.1070 so I'm going to write down this weight in my data sheet. So the sample is oxalic acid with two molecules of water of hydration. So the molecular formula of the oxalic acid is given here. So I'm going to write the weight as 0 0.1071. 0 0.1071 grams. So I measured the weight of the oxalic acid. So I'm going to transfer this one into the Elmer flask. So when you transfer, you must be careful. Uh, please make sure that you transfer the whole crystals from the weighing tray and after that I have to dissolve this oxalic acid in 50 ml of sulfuric acid so I have the sulfuric acid here and this is one molar sulfuric acid solution so I measured 50 ml in the graduate cylinder so I'm going to 
this all transfer the whole sulfuric acid into the aromatic flask and now I'm going to dissolve my crystals in the sulfuric acid solution okay so uh, all of my crystals got dissolved right now so I have a clean solution of oxalic acid in sulfuric acid aqua solution of sulfuric acid so before we start the titration now remember that this is a titration a reaction between your oxidizing agent potassium permanganate and the oxalic acid so this reaction is very slow so it takes place very slowly at room temperature so if you want to increase the speed of the space of the reaction or the speed of the reaction you just need to warm the reaction mixture especially the oxalic acid mixture so i'm going to heat here so i have the hot plate so i'm going to keep it on the hot plate to warm the solution a little bit okay the solution is uh, warm right now so i can see the fumes are coming uh, from the mouth of the element flask so I don't want to keep it anymore on the hot plate so I can take it right now okay now I'm going back to my stand so I have the burette here so I'm gonna bring the burette tip a little bit down into the flask so now I'm gonna start the titration process but you remember that the previous acid-based titration we added an indicator uh, into the uh, mixture or into the solution before the titration to get the end point but here in this redox titration we don't need an indicator why because you look at that the ox uh, potassium permanganate itself is colored so once you begin the titration you will get a slight pink color but when you keep on stirring the pink color will disappear but if you keep on or go on like that and once you reach the end point just like the previous experiment you get a slight pink color and that will stay in the solution for a long time that's going to be the end point. So we're going to start the titration right now. So as you can see, when I added the first drop, I got a slight pink color. So I'm stirring continuously. I should stir the solution for a little bit more time. So the pink color stays here for a long time. So you'll be confused uh, this one by as the end point, but this is not going to be the end point. So you have to keep on stirring for some time. So as I told you before, the reaction is very, very slow at room temperature. That's why still the reaction has to take place. It takes some while, it takes some time to initiate the reaction. So you just want to keep stirring for a few more minutes. Okay, now we can see, now we can see here the color disappears that means the reaction is already started so it's going on so when you add drop by drop so you can see each drop once it comes in contact with the oxalic acid this color disappears that means the reaction is going on okay so uh, we are continuing the titration so I'm gonna add I'm adding drop by drop the potassium permanganate still I can see that the color disappears that means I have to still I have to still continue to reach the end point. Okay, I can see if you look at the solution now, so the pink color starts to form and starts to stay there a long time, but still it disappears, it vanishes. That means it indicates that I'm getting pretty close to the end point. So what I'm expecting here, I should get a slight pink color throughout the solution in one drop. That's going to be the correct end point of this titration. Still I have to go drop by drop, maybe a few more drops. three drops
because I am seems like I'm very close to that point. So I should make sure that I stir the solution continuously. Done. Okay, so now it seems like in one drop, uh, my whole solution turns to pink. So I'm gonna I'm stirring right now vigorously. So, but still the color persists. That means uh, this is the end point of this first trial. Okay, so now if you go back to the burette reading here, so the upper meniscus of the potassium permanganate now sits at 17 point, so I'm gonna check it carefully, it's 17.70. So I'm gonna write the reading as 17.70. So the for the first trial, the final burette reading is 17.70 milliliters. Okay, so now the volume of potassium permanganate used for this titration is B minus A. That means the final burette reading minus the initial burette reading. So 17.70 minus 0 0.20, that is 17.50 milliliters. Okay, now uh, we're going to do the second trial. For the second trial, um, I measured the oxalic acid. It's weighed as a 0 0.1022 grams, as you can see in the screen of the balance. So I'm going to take this one out. I'll transfer this one into the element flask, and I repeat the same procedure. So I will dissolve them into the sulfuric acid, and I will go back to my burette, and I will start the titration. Okay, now the second trial, the oxalic acid weight is 0 0.1022 grams. Okay, now uh, my 50 ml of sulfuric acid is ready. So I'll transfer this one into the element flask. I dissolve. I dissolve the crystals in sulfuric acid. Okay, so now my crystals are dissolved. So I'm going to keep it on the hot plate to warm the solution. Okay, so my solution is warming right now. So meantime, I filled my burette back to zero. Now I kept the upper meniscus as 0, 0.00 of this burette. So my initial burette rating for the second trial is 0, 0.00. So for the second trial, the initial burette rating is 0, 0.00 milliliters. Okay, the solution is warm enough now. I can see the fumes coming out from the mouth of the conical flask. So I'm gonna take this one now. Let's start the titration. So I'll bring the tip of the burette into the element flask and I'm going to add the potassium permanganate drop by drop. Um, I can see now the solution, the pink color disappears. So I'm, I have to continue the titration like this until I get the end point. Okay, so uh, you look at the flask right now. So I got a slight purple color or pink color that stays the solution for a long time so that means I reached to the end point so this is the end point so uh, the upper meniscus of the potassium permanganate now sits at 16.7 16 16.7 so I would write the reading as 16.70 for the second trial so the final burette reading for the second trial is 16.70 milliliters and that's why now we can get the volume of KMN4 again 16.70 minus 0. That's why we can write the same value here 16.70 as the volume of potassium permanganate. Okay, for my third trial, uh, I took uh, the, K, uh, the oxalic acid, oxalic acid as 0 0.1050. That's a gram. So I'll take this one from the balance. So I'll transfer this one. And I'm going to dissolve with uh, the sulfuric acid. Meantime, I'm going to go back and write my. So, the third trial, the weight of my oxalic acid is 0 0.1052 grams. Okay, so uh, the crystals are dissolved now, so I got a clean solution. So now I'm going to heat the solution on the top of the hot plate. For the third trial, again I feed my burette back to the zero division. So I write my initial burette reading for the third trial as 0, 0.00. So for the third trial, 
the initial bureau trading is again 0 0.00 milliliters. Okay, my solution is warm enough now. I can see the fumes coming out. So I'll take this one. I'll go back to my bureau. Right. Start the titration now. So you can see the pink color starts to form, but I keep on stirring. Now, uh, as you can see now, the pink color vanishes. That means the reaction is now going on. So I have to continue the titration like this until I get my end point. Okay, so now I reached my end point. So as you can see that the pale pink color stays in the solution for a long time. So this is going to be the end point of this titration, the last trial. Okay, now if you look at the uh, upper meniscus of the potassium permanganate, so you can see that it sits at 17.1. So I would I would say uh, the end point as 17.10, the final volume. Okay, so back in the data sheet for the trial three, uh, for my final bureau trading, it's 17.10. So uh, my volume of potassium permanganate used is going to be the same, 17. Point one zero.